Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody had uh, a really good week of trading, some really solid action. I hope you guys survived Halloween. If you're like me, man, we got thousands of pounds of candy because kids just can't get enough of uh, trick-or-treating. So hopefully you guys are recovering. I am still here, allegedly, from death by chocolate. And hopefully you guys will have uh, an amazing rest because again, next week is another uh, fantastic, exciting, I'm just joking, uh, should be another boring, lethargic, predictable, high probability trading week. And the one thing I, I woke up this morning and again, uh, we had this, the clock, we got an extra hours of sleep and I woke up this morning and I felt really energized because uh, it feels like it's kind of the mid morning right now. It is, I'm recording this at eight o'clock, right? I'm recording this at eight o'clock. Uh, Eastern time. Okay. And I feel like it's kind of mid morning. So this is actually good because now the sun comes up uh, roughly around seven o'clock instead of waking up pitch black in the morning. So mentally for all those traders, this is all, these are all positive steps to kind of get uh, through the winter. So uh, let's talk about the tape. Very, very aggressive action. Again, uh, again, you can, if you can just go through like video after video after video, again, it, it's all technical analysis. There's really not a lot of surprises. There's a couple of things that we will address uh, in a few minutes, but the overall macro market, if we talked about this last week and the week before and all that stuff, all these steps, uh, reclaiming the 9068s, going back into the top of supply, uh, back testing into rising support, holding yada, 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 we're at all time high. So that's not where, um, that's not where the surprise is. Um, I, I, I kind of really, I, I kind of started really focusing on the price action towards the back half of the week. If, if you notice what happened, um, you had really strong earnings uh, from Apple, right? Delayed reaction the day before, but really, really strong move on Apple. Um, big move, obviously. Uh, I think the biggest weight on the NASDAQ 100, the QQQs, uh, Microsoft as well, very, very strong name, just consolidating to go higher. But it, what I started noticing towards the back end of the week, um, despite Facebook, which looked like they had pretty good earnings. Okay, you know, despite Facebook, you, you really didn't see a lot of really good, strong participation uh, from the NASDAQ 100 names, not the semis. I'm not talking about the semis. I'm talking about the names that I trade pretty much every single day. Uh, Netflix, you know, just couldn't get going kind of towards the end of the week. And again, you can make the, you can make the case, well, it's just consolidating, reclaim the five-day moving average is going to go higher. Uh, Amazon came out with earnings this week. Again, not horrible earnings, not at all, right? They held the sell-off very, very well. But again, maybe next week, again, maybe next week it reclaims supply and goes higher. But just it just couldn't get that big move going, right? Just couldn't get it going. Uh, Roku, again, could have really, really broken out, had the same kind of scenario with Netflix on Thursday and Friday, just couldn't get going. Tesla, which was, again, my top watch going into Friday's session, okay? We, we, we had this play perfectly, like perfectly, perfectly all week from the, the big run up, the second day play that I tweeted out. Uh, which again, I, I you know I put that um, I don't want to use the word lesson. I hate that that social media term, but that um, I, I reiterated, reiterated one of the better plays out there that I've been doing for years is you know that whole uh, once the stock puts in a big move, the next day it opens up red. It's a gift into rising support, and it goes red to green. So we had that. We had that blow off top. We we you know we shorted it perfectly, perfectly in the next several days into support. Even Friday was a good value trade. But again, it just couldn't get above the five-day moving average. And I started noticing this with a lot of names, like with a lot of names in the NASDAQ 100 space. You know, you go, to, you go through all of them. You go to Square, again, strong, but just couldn't bust out the rest of the market. Uh, Pinterest, and again, not that Pinterest is the end-all, be-all, not even a beta name, but, but names that people can identify that just couldn't get going. You had Shopify, same thing. And again, you look at the, you know, you look at the space of uh, the semiconductor space, very, very strong. I, you know, I still think Netflix 
uh, next leg up. You have Clack, right? You have Clack. So the semiconductors and Apple and Microsoft are definitely holding the ship. But it, again, I don't trade based on the indexes. The indexes for me are irrelevant. If you've been watching this kind of uh, broadcast on a weekly basis, the indexes for me are just guides, right? I know the market's strong. I, you know, you can see it. Again, any fool could look, turn around and see the market is incredibly strong. The one thing when you are a new trader, sometimes you know you you, you lag onto the the euphoria. You lag onto the linear. Aggression, you lag, and again, everything is perfect right now, right? Earnings are fine, at least on the surface. Er, er, earnings are fine. Um, the structure is fine, but what, what you guys don't have yet, and again, you'll get this in time. You don't just wake up uh, one morning and just understand everything about trading. It takes years and years and years uh, to really understand all the moving parts, and that's why you can't get anything in a book. You can't get anything uh, in an edited version of reality. You need to see everything in play in real time. That's why I always say uh, time is always the greatest teacher. But the one thing that I, you know, I started recognizing about 10, 12 years ago is the ability to recognize a warning, a warning sign. And again, you're not going to see it on the surface. You never will. And again, maybe it's nothing. But now we have two days in a row that the names that I trade every single day uh, they just did not participate for the most part. Okay, take Apple out of the way, take semis out of the way. I'm talking about the names that should have rallied, right? That really, really should have rallied with the market because their catalyst is out of the way, either earnings, whatever the case may be, uh, or they have a good number is they just didn't participate. Again, maybe it's something, maybe it's nothing, but at least for two days in a row, and we talk about this all the time, I start to gather evidence. I start to gather information to put myself in a situation to have a better, cleaner opinion the following day. And it started Thursday, right? It started Thursday. You saw Netflix getting hit. You saw Roku getting hit, Tesla coming in. But again, you know, I gave Tesla the benefit of the doubt. I still think the stock uh, goes higher. And you had these really massive, massive bets on uh, Netflix on Friday. I think north of $10, $12 million worth of bets. I believe it was the January, I'll tell you right now, instead of guessing, um, I'll tell you right now, it's, it was the January, where was it, where was it? Yeah, you see all these bets coming in, um, monster bets, right? You have these really, really huge bets. These were the February 290, 290 calls coming in, just massive moves. I mean, you're talking about you know, $10, $12 million uh, worth of bets, and they still couldn't get the stock really getting aggressive. Well, yeah, you had that pop, uh, you had that very, very aggressive pop off of, uh, off of the sweeps, but it was very, very odd. So, Again, nobody's talking about, you know, nobody's talking about their destruction of the markets. It's just something that we need to pay attention to going into this week. Because again, like I say, you don't want to trade with blinders on. Okay. The last thing you want to do is put yourself in a position that you are trading uh, with rose colored glasses. Because again, the market's just not going to tap you on the shoulder, especially if you are. Uh, especially if you are a position trader, right? The market's just not going to tap you on the shoulder and say, it's okay, it's okay, everything will be fine. Your portfolio is going to be okay. What we saw on Thursday, if you guys remember, it was a very, very odd day. I, I had a couple of buys that, you know, I do these dip plays, and I had a couple of buys. One was with Apple. It was the day that Apple uh, came out with earnings the next day. It was with Apple, and the next and the next way they was uh, excuse me, and the next play was BYND. This was on Thursday, and I noticed how both of them. When I was trying to buy the bottom of support, what usually happens is it's going to stall out at the bottom of support, right on the rising channel. And what would happen is the stock in a couple of minutes would usually stabilize and start really bouncing higher trapping shorts, trapping eager late shorts. And that didn't happen Thursday. It, 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 they literally, like Apple, like crumbled. You know, I wound up, like on Thursday, for example, on the bounce play, I wound up losing like 30 cents on Apple. So it wasn't even the point of the money. It was how easily, right? It was how easily they went through that rising support. And by the way, if I didn't stop out, right? If I didn't stop out, Apple went down like three, four, excuse me, like about three dollars, uh, two and a half, three dollars even lower. Uh, and the same thing with BYND. Like BYND, uh, and again, the only reason I was trying to buy the dip on Thursday, if you guys remember, Friday, had a, Wednesday had a really, really aggressive session, and it came into support, and it failed that support very, very quickly. So I knew right away, again, you don't need to, to get punched in the face 28 times to figure out that something is wrong, that it hurts. You have to get out of the way. And went into that Friday session kind of knowing this, 
Um, but again, I wanted to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. And the most ironic part about Friday's session, if you look at, uh, and again, this is this is the Alibaba uh, Alibaba pre market trade uh, that I put into the channel. We'll talk about that in a second. But if you if you looked if you looked at Friday's session, okay, I actually had everything to the upside, right? Literally to the upside. Forget about it. We'll talk about Al Alibaba for a second. But I actually had everything to the upside, okay? Um, I had Tesla long pivot, right? Amazon long pivot, Roku long pivot. I had both ranges on BYND, Facebook long pivot, uh, Boeing to the downside, AMT that worked out pretty well, uh, Netflix, actually I had Netflix to the downside. But if you look at, every, but if you look at everything pre-market, everything was set up to the upside, right? Everything pretty much was set up to the upside. And the most ironic part, when the market did open up, I found no value at all to the upside. And again, one of the hardest things, especially for a new trader, again, new, when, you're, when you're a new trader, you have so many things working against you. Most don't have a process. Uh, most don't not have uh, an adequate, uh, adequate way to control their emotions because again, emotions are part of having a process. When you have a process, it's much easier to curb your emotions trading with it without a process, you're a mess, you're all over the place. So most traders can't identify or don't even have the ability that something, if it's something so obvious, they can't switch, right? They can't switch. I have the ability to, if I see something wrong, especially with the macro structure or something technically just not getting there, I have the ability, because I'm doing this over 20 years, I have the ability to switch from long to short to short to long very, very quickly not on emotional, right? Not on an emotional case based on the technical case. And Friday was a perfect example that we literally went from long bias, right? Giving the longs the benefit of the doubt, collecting information the previous day that something was wrong. And we got really good value to the downside. Okay. Really, really good value to the downside. And the most important part is, again, if you're a new trader and you got long these stocks, right? On that opening break, Again, it's not your fault, okay? It's not your fault because, again, the market's strong, right? You've been hearing for years and years and years that the market is very strong. You should be, you should be long. You should be everything is good. The index is at all-time highs. Every stock should be exploding. And the thing is with me is when I'm trading that specific group, and this is the group I trade, I, I trade the same names 95% you know, of the time because, again, I understand that sometimes they do detach, okay? from the indexes. Sometimes there is a huge monster disconnect. And when that disconnect happens, I'm usually early on what could happen next. Now again, I don't want to freak anybody out. Okay. I'm not calling for the destruction of equity prices. Everybody, all you permable all you permables, stay calm. Stay calm. But again, when I see the leaders, right? The leaders, the happy go lucky cult stocks not generally participating in a very violent, especially upside bias market, again, you have to take a step back, right? You have to take a step back and really watch what's happening. Because again, I've said this in, in videos nonstop over and over again. Even if you don't trade beta, okay? If you don't trade Tesla, if you don't trade Netflix, if you don't trade Amazon, right? Uh, be, you know, everything between, okay? They do represent speculation money. These are the stocks that mutual funds, pension funds, hedge funds want to own. These are the biggest growth stories. These are the stocks that people know, they understand, and they love to be, uh, and they love to be long. So when there's money, when there's a buyer strike, and again, I'm not saying there will be, but it's something for us to at least acknowledge that it's happening. Look at Thursday session, look at Friday session in these names. If, if it continues to happen, it doesn't become a coincidence, okay? It becomes something that we really have to pay closer, closer attention to because, again, if you don't recognize the early signals, and again, maybe it's something, maybe it's nothing, but again, for us to understand that it might be happening, the market's just not going to tap you on the shoulder and say, oh, it's okay, it's okay, Tesla had really, really good earnings, it's okay, right? It's okay, the stock will go to 350 next thing you know, you have a $10 candle to 305 Again, I'm not saying it will happen. It's just something for us to watch. So going into this new week, you know, again, I'm still very, very bullish, but I want to watch early evidence come Monday morning of what happens next. I want to see if the futures rally, what happens with Netflix. I want to see if, what, if the futures rally, 
What happens with Roku? I want to see if the futures rally. We get it. Again, a monster catalyst, monster earnings on Tesla. Can it finally wake up? And if the answers to those questions are yes, then we have nothing to worry about, right? We have nothing to worry about. If the answer is no, you better take off those rose-colored glasses because, again, God doesn't care about your position. So praying to God that the stock rebounds doesn't work. I promise you, it doesn't work. There, there are babies born every single day with third, third world countries uh, blind, uh, with, with, you know, with, with horrible living conditions. So God, trust me, has other things to do than worry about your Tesla position. So again, do not put yourself in a box. You have, you have, a, you have, you have the free will to change your opinion. You have the free will to change your bias. But the most important part is do it technically, not emotionally. And again, the market's not going to tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, you're about to die. You're going to die. And again, it's, it's your job to take all the signals, to take all your data and try to make an intelligent decision of what to do next. So uh, let's talk about Friday. Okay. Uh, very, you know, really good week. Uh, really, really good week. Uh, Thursday, I didn't have a good day. I didn't have a third day. I just couldn't get going. Uh, I just couldn't figure out. I couldn't figure out what this market was telling me. Okay, I knew the market was very, very strong. I know the Dow was down 250 points, whatever it was, 200 points of the whole impeachment thing. I really didn't think that was going to be the catalyst going into Friday session. So I still wanted to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt, but I just couldn't get anything going because the names that I traded that should have been strong weren't strong. Um, and again, I cut myself off. It wasn't a bad day. It wasn't a horrible day, but I cut myself off and went into Friday. So Friday came... Um, really good value, but not the direction that I was planning to. So let's talk about it. Um, they started out with uh, Alibaba. Okay, this was pre-market, and I tweeted this again. This is why this is why technical analysis is so damn cool, man. It really is. It, this is what separates the dreamers and the talkers and the uh, opinion experts and all that stuff. The, the greatest judge, jury, and executioner is technical analysis. And I, I even put this on, I even put this on pre-market on my main Twitter feed. Okay. I, again, I wanted everybody to understand how important technical analysis is. And I, and I tweeted out and I said, look, this 174, right? This 174 is the bottom of the channel, right? You can see it. 174 is the bottom of the channel. If buyers defend that level, okay, and early aggressive sellers come in, really late sellers and shorters come in at this level, and it holds, that's a very, very important level. And obviously, I didn't tweet out what happened next. I put this on the private feed, but I said, hey, 174 held, right? 174 held, watch red to green for possible move. Note, again, this is not a pivot. Red to green is not a pivot. It's just earnings momentum. So again, we're collecting data. It held the 174. It went red to green. And Alibaba did really, really well. Congratulations to all you guys. Uh, who did trade this thing uh, really, again, here's the 74, right? Here's the 74. It reclaimed and the stock exploded. I mean, really, really, even if you messed up this trade, right? Even if you messed up this trade and stock went red to green on the 176 area, it still put up like a three, $4 move. So really, really good uh, move on Alibaba. Uh, like I said, you know, I said, here it is. If you're long, take it on the, on the way up, right? And then boom, big move. Boom, right? Social media word. Boom. Uh, big word. Uh, Uber, again, not a big move. Uh, Uber comes out and lock up 11.6. This really didn't work too well. I wasn't in this trade, but I, I saw the price action. Uh, didn't work too well. Uh, lock up 11.6. 31 if it builds below, it can flush. Uh, here was Uber. This one, I don't think it worked. Um, I don't think it worked too well. So here was the flush, right? So here is the flush here. Low 31. Uh, it only went up. I mean, look, look, if you took 50 cents in the trade, you took 50 cents in the trade. Uh, but it did turn around and started moving up. I, I didn't trade Uber, uh, just not my thing. But again, keep in mind, uh, lock up is coming out on 11.6. If you guys remember what happened with BYND, right? What happened with uh, Beyond uh, on the lock up, you really pay attention to what happened uh, and what might happen to uh, Uber. And again, here is, you know, Amazon. Uh, I traded Amazon several times this week, it was really good. It just it couldn't go right. It couldn't go. Maybe it goes. Maybe it goes this week. But Amazon, you know, not a big move yet. Seventeen ninety three needs to build. Uh, and if you look at Amazon again, this is where stocks were having a hard time, right? Seventeen ninety three, 
and it stopped right at supply. Okay, it only put up a five six dollar move and it came back in again. I like Amazon. Okay, I think it needs to reclaim supply for it to go again. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But again, it just couldn't give that big move. Uh, it really, really couldn't give that big move uh, on Friday along with a lot of names. Uh, again, I was watching Tesla. I, this was my focal point of the day. I mean, the most amazing part was. This was my focal point of the day going in. I said, okay, look, 1750, 18 is a sneaky area. It's a very, very aggressive area for experienced traders only. 319 macro, it needs to build. It never did that. It just never did that, right? So again, we'll talk about this in a second. Uh, Roku, sneaky area, 48, you know, 48, 80, 49 needs to go. Again, market's strong, right? Should go. It never got there. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, BYND, again, continues to be a really, really good trader. Again, here are the ranges. Uh, for Friday's session, 91 to the upside, 84 to the downside. I think BYND is going to see. Um, I, I think BYND is going to see um, 80 this week. Okay, uh, so we talked about that 84 area. Okay, uh, we talked about that 84 area. Uh, it broke 80, You know, it broke that 84 area. Went down to 82. I personally think the stock uh, is going to test that 80 uh, level, right? That earnings level. And I think the stock is going to get killed. So let's keep an eye on BYND for uh, this week. Um, let me see what else is going on here. I, again, Facebook. Uh, Facebook, again, another another example how there was just no strength, right? Uh, Facebook, uh, Facebook got above, you know, Facebook got above that 9380, right? That 9380 and just couldn't get going. It just could not get going. Again, can it go on Monday? Of course it can. But again, Got to, just got to pay attention to. So here's where things started getting good, right? Here's where things really started getting good. And this is where we really refocused, okay? Refocused because, again, we realized nothing was going higher. So, again, if something doesn't go up, must go, right? So AIMT, uh, big move here. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, Boeing never got down to this 339 level. Uh, AIMT, uh, 28 needs to build. Here was uh, AIMT. Oops, AIMT, right? So here's AIMT. I don't, I don't even know what the hell this is all about. And I think this is a fake print. Uh, yeah, it almost went to 29. It reclaimed 28, went to 29. Uh, yeah, and this is where things really, really, really got good. Uh, Netflix got hit, right? Netflix got hit very aggressively here. So here was, here was Netflix. Here was the 8430. Uh, you know, went down, you know, very, very aggressive, like two bucks very, very quickly. Again, nobody was talking to the destruction of prices just for stocks to go from demand to demand. Uh, so that was good. Uh, Roku was good. I mean, Roku was good. I caught this thing really, really nicely. Um, Roku, so here is the 145, right? Here is the 145 area. Uh, it broke the 145, excuse me, here's the 145 area right here. It broke and it just went right down to the bottom of the channel to the 143, so that was really good. Uh, that was a really cool trade. Um, like I always say, take money on the way down. Right, bingo. Uh, again, Tesla was beautiful. You know, Tesla was beautiful as well. Uh, three twelve on Tesla, right? Three twelve on Tesla. Here was the channel on on Tesla right here. This whole channel. It built three ten, ten went all the way down to three like three ten. Again, not destruction moves, but again, if something doesn't go up, must go. Right. So again, nobody's saying for Armageddon. We're just talking about price action, collecting data, uh, and moving forward. Um, Again, beyond my, my comments are the same, uh, you know, went to 82, any close below 82, which it did. Uh, I think it tests $80 on Monday and once it breaks, uh, and once it breaks 80, I think the stock will see 74, 75. So that was good. So again, not monster moves. Okay. Not monster moves, but again, not every single day we're looking for these monster aggressive you know, game, quote unquote, game changing trades. Sometimes you're going to just find areas of interest in the market that have nothing to do with the overall macro view. Okay. The market was super duper strong. And I noticed the stocks that we trade were not. And again, it's sometimes, you know, technical analysis becomes simplistic when you just use common sense. When a stock can go up with the futures exploding, there's a really good chance it's going to go down. And that's, and sometimes again, that theory plays out uh, really, really well. So again, something for us to think about. I'm still bullish, obviously, uh, going into uh, into the week. Again, just keep in the back of your minds, guys. Okay. Uh, let's watch what happens that first candle on Monday. Okay. If we start seeing again, Tesla can't rally, Netflix can't rally. 
and they start breaking down on the bottom of the channels, they're going to go lower. Again, I hope they don't, okay? I hope they don't because, again, when you look at Tesla, for example, okay, all it needs to do is reclaim this five-day moving average, and the stock is going to explode, right? If you look at Amazon, it just, again, just to give you an idea, all it needs to do is to reclaim the top of this channel, and it's going to explode. If you look at NVIDIA, right, right, and again, all it needs to do is reclaim this five-day moving average, it's going to explode. The problem is it keeps on getting rejected from the top of the channel. Apple is still a monster, obviously. Um, Microsoft, it looks like it wants to go higher. Uh, Intel, you know, again, Intel, I like Intel. I think Intel goes higher. I think Intel, all it needs to do is reclaim this 5670. It's going to go higher. But again, look how tight this range is. And this is what's great about pivots, right? We don't care which way they go. Like you see me all the time tweeting, uh, tweeting, tweeting ranges in the private feed. Um, BYND, 91 to the upside, 84 to the downside. So what's the difference which way the stock goes, right? What's the difference which way the stock goes? So going into this week, I have a very, very definitive channel for Tesla to the long side, to the short side. Same thing with Intel, same thing with uh, Microsoft, same thing with Amazon. And again, here's a perfect example of Intel. Okay, you don't need to guess. You don't need to forecast. You don't need to uh, play Miss Cleo and take out your crystal ball. Here's the channel, right? The top of the channel is Intel. If it gets above 5670, it starts to build, it's going to go higher. All right? Look at the bottom of the channel. It's very, very tight. If, if Intel starts losing 5560, 5550, it's going to go lower. So you don't need to be a bull or a bear, you just need to have common sense. You just need to take off the rose colored glasses and let the market tell you. Again, our opinions mean crap, okay? I'm the king of the idiots. I'm a schmuck, I'm a moron, I'm all these things. But again, I have common sense. And when something, you know, something tells me go, I go. Okay, you don't you don't sit there and try to you know try to take your opinion, have an opinion of what's gonna happen next. The market is gonna tell you what's gonna happen next. Your opinion doesn't pay. Price action does. So going to this week, guys, I am bullish, but again, I want to be very, very conscious of a potential pull, continuation pull of these names, because if these bottom channels start to confirm, we're going to go lower. And again, it doesn't mean a macro pull lower. It just means a view of the, the beta cult names that could get pulled, and they could be pulled uh, very, very aggressively. So everybody, uh, I want to wish you guys an awesome, awesome uh, trading week. Okay. Uh, we got an extra hour, right? We got an extra hour. Uh, use that hour wisely. Okay. Uh, instead of worrying about your fantasy football team, the enactors, one guy is questionable. Okay. Take that hour and do something productive for your trading career. Look at charts, back test, look at some news, do whatever you need to do. Okay. To put yourself in a better situation to succeed for Monday. Again, if you're doing exactly the same things over and over again, okay, you're not getting anywhere. What makes you think that next week is going to be different? Okay. Trading is not hoping and praying and you're a good person. You're humbled and all that good stuff. That's great in real life. It's important to be humble and a nice person and, you know, love your kids and love your wife and love your dog. As a trader, you have one job, collect the information, wait for it to confirm and strike with extreme prejudice. Guys, God bless, love you all. And I'll see you on the field tomorrow. Take care. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.